So just a welcome to everyone who's joining us tonight. We're going to get started in about two minutes. Um, but if you are here, feel free to uh, type in the chat box if you have any questions you wanted to submit um, or just to say hi. And we will get started shortly. See you guys soon. Hello, uh, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. It is uh, our portfolio night and this year we are doing uh, something a little bit different, but first I would just like to say welcome. My name is Gio and I will be your moderator tonight for our illustration and visual art portfolio night. Uh, we're kicking off uh, the series with illustration visual art, but we do have two other events coming up. So please make sure to stay tuned and um, see or hear more about that as well. If it's your first time on our YouTube channel, welcome. Uh, we would love to see more of you. So you are more than welcome to click the subscribe button if you wanna hear more from us and stay up to date when we release new videos. Um, we release YouTube tutorials for drawing, uh, fun speed paints, and then of course, uh, resources like this to help with portfolio students or any students who are just interested in pursuing the arts, um, whether in high school, post-secondary, uh, or in their careers. So without further ado, we're gonna get started. We are Wing Canvas. Some of you may have heard of us before. If you haven't, we are so glad you're here today. We used to be a physical studio, but this year we moved online. It was a steep learning curve, but we have learned so much and we are so excited to be doing our first official YouTube Live event tonight. A little bit about us. So we are, um, we pride ourselves in being arts educators and we create free educational content as we talked about on YouTube. Uh, and we also make resources for teachers and other arts educators from the video content uh, that you see on our channel to events like this, to worksheets, curriculum plans, and even live lessons. We are also all advocates for arts education um, within schools and outside of schools. We ourselves are an online art school and we teach a lot of different types of programs. We are completely online or virtual right now. However, we did used to do um, workshops in schools as well as in studio and we offered a wide a variety of programs. Some of the programs that we're known for is, as you can see on the screen here, art mentorship which is um, our specialty uh, program where we have an artist mentor that mentors a group of students based on their interests and uh, with their goals. And they come up with curriculum specialized to their goals. Another offering that we're known for is our intensives. It is specifically for teens and adults, and it is meant to fast track students learning in a very specific discipline or medium so that over a short amount of time, they're able to uh, accomplish the goal uh, or accomplish the uh, learning goals for that style or medium. Uh, and then we are gonna keep going. <laughs> so as we talked about earlier, we do have three events this year. It's the first time we're doing three different ones. We used to have one event in a space and we would sell out every year. I think this is our 
third year doing it third or fourth year doing it <laughs> um but uh, we're excited that we're able to not only split it into three parts to cover three different industries but we are able to open and expand the opportunity to anyone um, who has access to youtube which has been very exciting for us this year all right, so now I get to ask our uh, panelists to turn on their cameras and I'm just gonna uh, do a brief intro before I pass off the mic to them. So here we have Faye, um, let me actually, one second, there we go. Um, she is our creative director and uh, the um, OG uh, founder of Wing Canvas through two physical locations and now online. Next, we also have Nassim. If you want to turn on your camera and wave. She is an illustrator and an instructor and she's been with us for a while as well. She teaches our realistic drawing classes as well as a lot of the uh, drawing and illustration specific programs. And last but not least, we have Anna, if you want to turn on your camera. So Anna, um, it's a really cool story because she's been with us through different, many different roles from a student to a volunteer. Um, and as well now as a panelist, she spoke at our event last year as well. And we know we had a lot of positive feedback uh, from our students who got to hear about your experiences. Um, okay, without further ado, Faye, would you like to start us off? Okay. Sure. Lovely. Thank you. All right. So my name is Faye. Let me just pull up my presentation here. Um, all right. So first of all, I don't know if we did the welcome in intros, but uh, we are going to start by introducing ourselves. And then at 830, we're going to be doing a Q&A. So the Q&A is uh, basically you get to submit your questions in the live chat. Uh, we'll be checking uh, in frequently. And if you didn't get a chance to submit your questions beforehand, um, you can do it now. So we'll answer as many questions as we can. And a little bit about me. So my background is an illustration, uh, officially an, il an illustration, but I dabbled in all different types of art and I really love the experience. Uh, I went to Art Center College of Design. It's a school of design in California. And I returned back to Canada, to my hometown of Markham. Um, and before that, I did spend some time working as an illustrator, doing freelance work. Uh, and then I worked as a graphic designer and an art director for many years. So I've kind of been in both commercial art uh, and traditional fine art. And I've looked at lots and lots and lots of portfolios. And so I'm really, really excited to be here tonight. Um, I founded Wing Canvas with my partner in 2013. And it's been really, really fun. And uh, yeah, and that's it. We are gonna get started soon and Oh yeah, one thing I did want to mention is when we first started Wing Canvas, um, I did teach most of the classes and now I am teaching specifically art mentorship uh, as well as art intensives. So I specialize in figure drawing, portraiture, structure drawing. Um, and if I had to show you some of my work, so <laughs> I have so much stuff to show, but I just kind of uh, took a smattering of some of the examples here. So uh, you can see I like to use a lot of color in my work. I like to use a lot of humor in my work. I think humor is the best way to get inside somebody's head um, and to make them laugh, I think is really important. So I think humor is a great thing uh, to put in your portfolio as well. Lots of humor, lots of color. Um, and I'll show you some of my design work. So, <laughs> You can, you know, a lot of people um, will say, okay, well, what's the difference between illustration and design? And if I go to art school, there are so many different majors that I could actually uh, specialize in. And um, I would say that il illust both, whoops, sorry, both illustration and design um, are 
essentially the same thing at its roots. Um, and it's really about communicating, about storytelling. Um, and my design work was uh, a lot of, um, it was a lot of fun. It was very different because in illustration, you work a little bit more solo, whereas with design, you work in more of a team. So I was very lucky I got to experience both. Um, I think that's my cue to pass it on to Nassim to do your introduction. Sure. All right. Thank you very much, Faye. You're welcome. It's always interesting hearing about someone's backstory. Uh, okay, and now we're going to have Nassim share a little about uh, her expertise and her experiences. Whoop. Whoop, sorry. No worries. <laughs> As everyone probably has experienced, it has been a learning curve with uh, technology in all its glory <laughs> and all its complications. Um, well, so I'm just it again. <laughs> no worries, Nassim. If you, I know I've seen some questions in the chat already. Thank you very much. We are making note of it so that we can get to them later on. Uh, so please don't be shy and submit your questions. Ah, should be working now. Yep. Well, thank you so much for having me, Wayne Canvas. Well, it's a pleasure. Uh, it's a pleasure being with you guys. It's a pleasure being physically or from distance virtually in any possible way it has always been great. I miss all the students that I had with you guys. Um, hopefully we can rejoin soon again. Uh, so my name is Nassim. I'm originally from Iran. Uh, actually, I'm a mix. I never know exactly where it's considered to be home. So um, let's say for wherever you are, doesn't matter as long as I'm an artist and I feel very home when I'm among artists. Uh, I have an MFA, a Master of Illustration um, from SCAS, Savannah College of Art and Design in the USA. And I also have a Bachelor of Science in Visual Communication, which at that time uh, was 1998, was supposed to be the same as graphic design. But after my um, program, my bachelor finished, I felt, oh, I need more. It's just not enough. I, I don't know. So that's why I headed to the States to get a master. And I was always a, um, I was always a more of an image person. So I think text and type has never been my thing. So I felt always illustration is more me. Um, so I did my master's there. Then I found this teaching job in, at Zayed University in the United, in United Arab Emirates. I've been teaching there and for four years then we moved to canada and i got this job at ocat i'm still an adjunct faculty in ocat and then i meet this great people at wayne canvas uh, i've been teaching um drawing painting the art foundation or some of the mentorship programs and right now actually in the middle of covid a lot of people lost their jobs i suddenly found a permanent job <laughs> in a christmas company which is actually amazing i I'll draw and I paint every single day and you see your art on products, which is amazing. And that's what I love about my job that it's so wide and it could be applicable on a lot of things. You could teach, you could produce things, you could do a lot of different things. It's all about creating new and meeting new people. And um, I'm not sure if you guys or any of you have seen my website before or my art before. But just to um, show a few of it, I recently started to have very feminine art. A lot of, um, I call it the feminine manifestation or manifesto, and it had to do a lot of different figures um, with different backgrounds, different nationalities. So you can see a lot of different, and it doesn't matter really what kind of skin tone they have, it's, but a lot of elongated hands, a lot of long necks, so that has been my recent um, work, personal work. But before I used to be more, a little bit of more into the whimsical art and um, things like that, I used to do much more. Um, so a lot of children's books, storytelling, uh, a lot of trips to Bologna to do the show of the children's books. So it's, it's a big fair 
that you could have and go see all sorts of children's books from all over the world and they're all amazing. And I consider myself a mixed media artist. So if you can see most of my art, it's just, there's a little bit of acrylic, a little bit of color pencils, a little bit of watercolor, a little bit of this. So I think I never had like a favorite medium. Um, whatever works in that moment for me, I go with the flow with that. So, um, I think if I want to talk, I can talk till tomorrow. Don't do that with me, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nassim. Um, if, actually, if you can just press the present button at the top right there. I think some people are having a hard time reading the text in this stream. No worries. Uh, so, yeah, we just show off your artwork there. And then if you want to go back a few slides so we can uh, have a good look at your accolades and your uh, educational experience. Thank you to those that are commenting and letting us know. So much better. We can see it. it I am so sorry. I no worries. It's going to do that. But before. There we go. That, yeah. yeah. So for those that missed, this is the list. Um, and if you if there's anything that you have questions about specific to any of uh, our panelists, you are welcome to also direct your question towards them in the chat as well. Uh, yeah, Anissa, did you have anything else to add? No. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, once you end your presentation, we will now pass it on to Anna. Perfect. So Anna, as we mentioned, she joined us and I'm sure she'll tell you all about it, but uh, we are very, very excited to have her here and have things come around full circle. Yeah, so um, I don't think I have as much uh, history as Faye or um, Nassim, but uh, I was um, a Wing Canvas student. I still am, I'd like to think, but um, I currently volunteer, I help out volunteering and uh, yeah, so I, at the Winged Canvas, uh, I took art mentorship and art intensives, uh, and I was accepted into Unionville in January 2019. So uh, this was the portfolio that I submitted to um, Unionville. It's been a while. I think my art has improved a lot, but I can confidently say that without Art Hub, I would not have been able to go to Unionville at all. So. Um, these are just some of my works. Um, yeah, so uh, just a little bit of comparison. Um, to the left was when, like the four images to the left was when I first joined Art Hub. I had no prior training. I didn't know what I was doing. And um, the images to the right um, are some of the pieces that I've done um, when I first joined Unionville. And there, the digital piece on the top right is one of the projects that I did in ninth grade. So uh, this, these are some of the projects that I did during Unionville. Uh, we were able to create these like massive dragon puppets for one of our shows. Um, we were able to create these sculptures that were very challenging because of like the constraints and materials, but uh, it's just a very fun experience at Unionville. And uh, these are some of my recent works now. Uh, during quarantine, these are all made during quarantine or a little bit before that. I'm just gonna jump in here and say Anna is our success story. Um, <laughs> I had the pleasure of working with her when she first came. And if uh, Anna, if you if you don't mind just going back to your uh, your portfolio, I think it's really important. Um, I think that's a really really good thing for everybody to see. Now keep in mind, this is a grade nine portfolio application. This is a, a high school application. And some, I, I have to say like sometimes I would see grade 12 or university applications that are about this quality. So you really knocked it out of the park. I mean, it's, it's all thanks to <laughs> Winged Canvas. I, it's all thanks to you guys, yeah. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thanks on all ends there, definitely. Um, actually, I wanted to ask Anna, just for those that might not know um, what um, AU is or Arts Unionville is, could you just share a little bit more about exactly the program that you're in? So uh, Arts Unionville is a specialized art program at the Unionville High School. Um, you need to go through an application process to be able to be admitted. Uh, yeah. 
it's just a it's just sort of like an extra not extra but it's a course that um is accelerated and you can do more versus normal high school art programs yeah and um how competitive or how uh, intense, I guess, would you say uh, the audition process and the acceptance process is? So uh, from what I remember, there's about 125 people that apply to Unionville every year and only 20 people get in. So that is the Whoa. acceptance rate, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, definitely one of the more competitive schools in um, the York region and Markham area, that's for sure. Uh, so definitely a, lots of, a lot of props to both you, Anna, and you, Faye, for uh, journeying through to get in. All right, so everyone, I guess, Anna, I'm gonna let you finish first and then. <laughs> and then oh, I'm yeah, go. I'm finished, yeah. Okay, all right, wonderful. So uh, most people here are probably here because they do wanna know, uh, tips specific to portfolio building. As you can see here, we have a diverse range of experiences and industry experience. Um, I guess I just wanna start off, uh, let me, before we jump to the q and I wanted to start off just by asking you guys each, if you, what's the first thing you remember about um, your portfolio building experience? The first thing I remember, oof, it was a, long time ago uh, i remember being very nervous and i remember i was in love with art center um which was the school i ended up going to and i was i was really really um dedicate like i dedicated all of my time and put all my eggs in one basket so to speak because i know that a lot of people um, apply to many different schools and i just chose to apply to one so i took a big risk um but it also made the process easier so i was lucky but if i had to do it again maybe i would apply to my top three Oops, all right, thanks, Faye. Uh, for, I guess, Nassim or Anna? Um, I didn't know what I'm doing, really, to be honest, yeah. So I thought I have to put everything in it, from a sculpture that I had, from everything, everything. So I, I could bring my whole projects and put it all in. So I thought the more, the better. But um, finding and selecting, refining, I would call it, that was the hardest part for me to select. And there's, you know, for us artists, pieces um, that you produce, they're like your babies. All of them are almost good, especially when you start creating, that you think you have the best. So refining them was the hardest part. Mm -hmm. I, definitely, I definitely agree about the refining part because one of the one of the biggest mistakes I think that uh, portfolio students make is they put more like they put too many pieces in their book and sometimes it's it's the pieces that they're personally proud of or that is very meaningful or personal to them but it may not be the strongest piece um and i definitely made that mistake too <laughs> yeah and I guess, Anna, you, you did yours more recently, but yeah. do you remember kind of like just when you were oh. first starting, how you felt about all of that? It was very rushed because um, I started going to Winged Canvas, uh, I think March of 2018. And uh, if you remember on the slide, I had to submit my portfolio on January 2019. So I had about a year to get my things together. Uh, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I was only able to create one piece for every requirement, which is not recommended if you want to apply to high school or any school for that matter, have options, I'd say. Um, but yeah, I remember it being very rough and very rushed. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, back then, all I knew was I liked to draw and I wanted to go to high school for it. Uh, yeah, so it, Unionville was my first choice. I was lucky enough to get accepted. Um, but I remember being terrified because I was not confident in my portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's cool to see because everyone comes into it from a different, you know, place, different parts of the journey, different emotions, whether it's 
not being sure um, to maybe being stressed and confused to maybe really like zeroing in on exactly what they want. So uh, it's good to hear that there's all these different experiences. Okay, so I'm going to uh, transition over to the Q&A portion because I've went in and added some of the questions that were submitted in the chat as well as the pre-submitted questions. If anyone has any additional questions, please feel free to put in the chat. We will, uh, as Faye said earlier, get through as many as possible, but we will address the ones that were pre-submitted first. All right. Here we go. Oh, also, given like Anna to to your point of like oh you didn't have a lot of time like can I, let me let me just go back here and be like you know like within within oh wait one sec within one year like that that's amazing <laughs> so a big thank you uh, yeah. big clap for that all right okay so q a portion i'm going to ask a question and then i'm going to offer it up to uh the panelists i might prompt one of you or if you want to jump in at any time please feel free to do so and first let me turn on my camera there we go so the first question is what was your biggest challenge in art school and what surprised you the most if anyone wants to take a stab at that uh, okay, I will go first. Um, I remember, okay, so my biggest challenge uh, and what surprised, what surprised me the most is when I applied to art school, I didn't really do my research properly. I didn't really think about, I thought art school was just drawing and painting. I didn't even think about, you know, graphic design and entertainment design and concept art and animation. Like, I just thought, hey, I like to paint, I like to draw, I'm gonna go to art school. So I applied for fine arts. And uh, I'll tell you a little story. Um, I love fine art, I'm all, you know, I, I, I collect art and I'm all about that, but I learned on the in the very first week that it was not for me. Um, and I remember being in my fine art class and just sweating because we spent the entire class kind of talking about how to turn a stick or how to make a stick conceptual. And I, my brain just wasn't there at that time. I think I would have enjoyed that class now. Um, but at that time I was like, wait, wait, I want to, I want to learn how to draw like this. I, I want to illustrate storybooks. So I obviously applied for the wrong major. Um, and so very quickly. I changed to illustration and I realized, yes, this is my true calling. This is what I want to do. And it's really, really important, I think, for portfolio students, especially if you're applying now, to do your research, to, you know, ask the online community or, you know, if your favorite Instagram artist or people that you follow that inspire you, ask them what it's like to be a freelance artist or ask them what it's like to work at an animation studio. Um, you really don't know until you talk to people. And I think that was the biggest surprise and challenge. Um, but luckily, <laughs> it was solved within the first few weeks. So. <laughs> um, for me, it was, I would call time management. And I see it a lot happening in my students right now at OCAD. I was one of, I mean, if you saw my work is pretty detailed and I like to take my time. I like to grab my coffee. I like to work late at night and I like to have my own speed. I thought it's an artistic thing. I thought most artists are like that. They have to be like that. But through art school, I noticed that's not, that's not the game. So you need to, really refine, you need to do sacrifices, a lot of sacrifices in your art, a lot of sacrifices in your timing, or maybe the way you manage your own time. Maybe there's a technique that you would love to do, but it's gonna take so long and you, you cannot um, finish it on time. So that's, that was the biggest, I would say, probably challenge for me to still say, stay true to your own art, how you like to present your work by still being on time and, working sufficiently and presentable without messing up around your art and all of that. That will be mine. Uh, well, I'm, I'm still in art school. I don't know how much I can say about that, but uh, 
just the amount of opportunities that I get to do different things. Because again, uh, we were able to create these giant puppets. We were able to work on some really big projects that I don't think I would have been able to do on my own at all. Uh, we were able to create these really big, like um, four feet by eight feet portraits. Uh, now we're working on a mural to go onto Main Street. Um, it's just, just the amount of opportunities that I get to get my art out there and build my portfolio a little better. Yeah, to Anna's point, like that really surprised me too. When I when I went to art school, you know, there was a shop. I got to work with tools. I got to use power tools. Like I never thought that I would use power tools to make things and, you know, doing outdoor installations and you're going to school with so many other creative people that it's really amazing what you're exposed to. So I totally remember that now. Just had a flashback. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna take you back on all of you, and I because I realized I didn't say much about myself, but I also studied in a fine arts program, and I also remember very similar things um, where I was like, wow, like there's just such a wide variety of um, opportunities, of tools, of disciplines, and also of people, just different people, and like in the sense that just different people that come in with different ideas of of the kind of artist they want to be, but also um, you really see people change uh, and grow and take, you know, different turns um, because you're exposed to so much. And I think that was a really, I guess it's less of a challenge and more of a pleasant surprise. Um, I am seeing, by the way, the uh, questions and comments coming in, please keep them coming in and we will try and get through as many as possible. Uh, and having said that, I'm going to move on to the next one. Uh, should written descriptions be included with sketches in sketchbooks? And maybe we can do a rapid fire round of this one. Sure, I'll, I'll speak to this first because I just taught a class and we just talked about sketchbooks. Um, written descriptions are pretty formal. If you think of a written description, it could be like an artist statement um, if you're looking at it in the fine art sense. Descriptions are generally good to help somebody looking at your work um, to understand it better. So it's better for the actual pieces. For sketchbooks, you don't really need to include a written description. You could, like if you have multiple sketchbooks, you could say, this is my figure drawing sketchbook, or this is my sketchbook from this date to this date. Um, particularly if you're, if you're submitting like, let's say two or three sketchbooks, I want to see which one is current and which one is old. And if you have bad drawings in the old ones and really good drawings in the new ones, I can see your improvement. And that's really important. In terms of written stuff I want to see a lot of notes in your sketchbook like I want to see that you you take notes that you're documenting your process work um, so notes in the sketchbook on pieces that you're currently working on is what I would recommend probably the same answer as Faye I would say I, I think Faye she kind of stated it much better than me actually um, but a uh, from the experience that I saw at OCAD sketchbooks, they they are supposed to be very personal, and there some there are some students that are they don't like to write at all in their sketchbooks. We've seen that, and we always encourage them at least a few little notes, few little. So from if it would be me looking, if if I would be one of the judge panels in the sketchbook, I wouldn't want to see essays going on. I would not. But let's say if you're applying for graphic design, I want to see how you play with type. Definitely, I would want to see that. If you are into graphic design or layout and all of that, yes, the play that you're doing with that. But if you went on your final pieces that you're submitting, definitely you need to have um, either an artistic statement or what is it. And it really has to be well typed, well written, good grammar, no spelling, all of that. But in the sketchbook, I wouldn't worry too much. Yeah, and I don't know if you remember, uh, like, if you put stuff in your sketchbook or how you went about uh, that. I, I did have to do a one page written description, which they did ask for. If they do ask for it, remember to triple check because you do not want to have any mistakes. But uh, in terms of sketchbooks, um, if you're doing any thumbnails, anything that like you want to get more detail into, definitely have some descriptions, have some little notes just so that um, the viewer and the judge can get into your head a little and understand what the piece actually is talking about. Yeah, definitely. I think everyone touched on the idea of a process and personality and just giving uh, another way for your adjudic adjudicator or the panel or the judge, I guess, to see beyond just, oh, okay, like 
who knows, maybe they did this, maybe their teacher did this, maybe their friends all did it, but they get to see that process and they get to see more of who you are behind, you know, your pieces. Uh, wonderful. Okay, let me keep going here. The next question is, does it matter what medium you present to the judges that might increase or decrease your chance? Oh, Faye, I think you're, you're muted. Does it matter to the judges what medium you present? Yes, I would say definitely. Um, I think that uh, it it depends on what you're applying for. Like, let's say you are applying for animation, which we're going to talk about in a totally different seminar. But um, if you are an illustration student or a visual art, fine art student, I do want to see all of those interpretations of drawing and painting. So that can include things like, you know, obviously pencil, pen, uh, you know, lots of color, collage. Um, I want to see you experimenting with a variety of different mark making styles and tools. Um, I think that I flip through many sketchbooks, for example, and they're all pencil. And that you know, maybe the drawings are excellent, but it's kind of showing me that you're not really trying new things. So if you're applying for a university program, I mean, if you're applying for a master's program, it's very different because it's much, much more specialized. Or like if you are applying for an illustration job um, out and you're fresh out of school, then I would say focus on one style. Um, but if you're trying to get into illustration school or into fine art school, I would definitely say different styles showcases your variety and versatility. Yeah, um, I don't know if anyone else had anything to add. Um, definitely agree with Faye, uh, yes, depends on, the, on what you're applying. If you're applying for drawing and painting or illustration, it's always good to show that you are comfortable using both wet, dry, digital, all this and that, all of it. So you're comfortable doing that. But I would say keep a balance between having a style so you can still show the judges, hey, this is my style, but I'm also ready to try new things. A, a balance between the two is usually good. Don't be too much, oh, this is just my style. I don't wanna do anything else. And don't be too much of, blue, red, red, green, this, this, that, and you don't know. So I would say have something in between. Show them that you're flexible both ways. Yeah, speaking of in terms of high school, um, they really want to be able to see that you can experiment and that you're open to trying new things. Uh, there are a lot of portfolios that I saw on the application day where they were very talented, but they could only do one thing very well. And they didn't really experiment. They only painted or they only sketched. But they really want to see that you can sort of branch out and that you're comfortable in doing different things. Yeah, I think a note to mention is um, that's what art school is for, right? Like in terms of honing in, you know, and really building uh, up that your style and uh, your voice in that regard. But if you're applying to art school, they're looking for more your ability to learn, your ability to um, cross all those kind of areas. While at the same time, like Nassim said, having that cohesion um, that you, you're not just doing random things either but uh, you have the right attitude and the skill to back it up. Uh, I think that was a really good question. All right, the next one we have is, how can a judge tell a painting piece if it is from a photo? So <laughs> uh, for those that don't know, uh, we in the artist world, there is a difference between painting from something that is uh, in, right in front of you, whether it's a still life, plain air, uh, figure drawing, live model, or from a photo. So I, I'm gonna pass this off to Faye first. <laughs> Thank you. I actually hear this question a lot. Like, how can how can someone really tell? And, you know, to be honest, it's an honor system, mostly. Um, the reason why you are told to not paint from photos is a photograph flattens everything already, right? So you're only limited to that flat image. Whereas if you're drawing something and, you know, I love drawing from life. Like that's one of the things I love to do is, is life drawing, drawing from real people. Um, you have, there's the type of energy that you just can't capture um, when you're drawing from a photograph. Because when you're looking at something from life, you're moving around, you can kind of like your your eyes, you know, they're, they're designed to see in 3D. So like your cone of vision is that way. So 
are adjudicators looking at this and saying, hmm, was this done from a photo? They're going to trust that if you were required to draw from life, then that that you're doing it right. So you don't really want to lie about that. Um, in some cases, like especially with COVID, you know, it's really hard to draw models or really hard to draw figures because there's nowhere to go. And I think that if you're worried about that, don't worry. We're all in the same place. And I'm pretty sure that adjudicators are forgiving in that sense and they know what you're limited to, right? And it's also okay to put that in your statement. Just be as honest as possible and I think you'll be in a good place. Yeah, anyone wanna add to that? Um, same as Faye, um, but one thing that I see a lot in animation students and film students, definitely if you are planning to go to animation and film, make sure you know movement in 3D. That's something that we notice most um, students in drawing, painting, or illustration lack. It's they don't they don't know how to exactly because they've been using so many photos. I use a lot of photos. I'm sure we all use a lot of photo references. But when it's into animation and film or something that has to do with movement, I would say life drawing and knowing exactly, let's say, how a crocodile moves. Definitely, that needs um, a lot of life drawing. Yeah, to be honest, I feel like some of my teachers are psychic because they just know. But um, I've I've asked a lot of people have asked them this question before, and a lot of it just comes to, down to like how much depth they can feel. Sort of, I don't, I'm not sure how to explain it, but they can tell. Yeah, some things I've also seen and heard is that photo reference images are more detailed and actually more accurate um, than drawing from live because when you actually you see more when you see things live but at the same time because you're processing so much more the way you capture it right like you've got so much focused on seeing everything when you capture it it's not captured the same way you would when you're looking at a photo right when you're looking at a photo you're really translating this like much more mechanical process um and so funnily enough it like it's almost like you could be more technically accurate drawing from you know a photo but it's not necessarily the same thing um if that makes sense <laughs> okay so next one oh one sec i went the wrong way here we go the next question we have is if you are going to an art specialty school do you always have to continue your career as some sort of an artist or can you do it just for fun <laughs> <laughs> that's that's you know what absolutely you can do it just for fun i mean i would say 50 years ago people had one career and they kind of stuck with that for their whole lives and that was the way life is but now things are moving so quickly like i you know i've done illustration and graphic design and and started a school and you know it's still going and now we're virtual so it's a big one big adventure so i would say don't really let that um let that thought kind of bother you absolutely like if you if you go to any program or any school and you find that you you do something else doesn't mean that those skills and those things that you learned are wasted you will find a way to apply them to other things and creativity is one of the most wonderful things that can be learned and it will change your life forever even if you only end up doing it for fun well for me every time i try to leave the artistic world or let's say doing something else, it came back to me. So even if I tried, it came back. So I've stopped resisting it. So I say, you know what, this is it. So I'm saying if it's uh, that thing that Faye was talking about, if it's in you, it's like a little fire in you and it might not always be drawing or painting. Maybe it's gonna be in a book, in a, in a, in a creative writing, you're gonna see it. I don't know, it might change form throughout life from this to that, to theater, maybe to acting, to something else. But yeah, as creativity is something that it doesn't, even if it changes, let it be open to it and try to have it somehow next to you. Well, uh, I have a lot of friends who actually 
don't want to do art as a career. They're just doing it because they think it's fun. Again, they like it. It's a passion for them. Um, but go for it. If you don't, if like, if eventually you don't want to do art, that's that has nothing to do with going to art school or not. I don't think. Yeah, it was all really good responses. Um, I like I like Faye's uh, quote of "It's an adventure." So, you know, you never know where these skills will take you. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go to the next slide. What should and shouldn't you write for the description of your portfolio pieces? And should I relate all art pieces to the program applied? It is similar to the previous one, but a little bit different. What should and shouldn't you write? Okay, so you shouldn't write things that are really obvious. Like if you're showing me a still life, don't say this is a still life that my teacher told me to do. I honestly, I've read those descriptions and I'm like, why i can see that don't state the obvious so if you're going to show me a still life tell me about the objects that you chose tell me what they mean do they do they symbolize something tell me the idea help me appreciate your artwork deeper than just what it is um and should i relate all art pieces to the program applied uh most art programs will allow you to show some personal work so even if you're like applying to very specific majors, like let's say animation, for example, they they allow you to in, include some personal work. And I think that I personally, I love looking at the personal work because, you know, you see, you can only look at so many portraits and so many still lives. And, but when you see what people do on their own time, it's, it's beautiful. And I think Absolutely. Um, you should show things that are outside what is required if you are allowed to do that. Definitely for the question that says, should it be related to the program? I think the pieces that you choose should be very related to the program, not necessarily exactly what you're writing. So maybe you're applying for film and cinema and again, I'm talking more about universes, so it's maybe a little advanced. But um, so not the writing, but the pieces that you choose, I would say. Well, if you're choosing a sculpture, so um, how is the sculpture relating to film and cinema? Maybe in the future, but not exactly in the description. I would say that. And then um, what should, shouldn't you write for that? I would say, um, don't say I like this or I don't like this. This is something that's gonna drive everyone crazy. <laughs> All the judges, why do you like that's that's what we if you like it, you better say why do you like it? What's so special about it? What was this piece? What was the inspiration? What did you see that suddenly you remember to use this and that? So that will be what they are looking for, just, just to know who you are, what's so special about you, how are you different than others? That's what I would emphasize on. Yeah, like especially talking about the first uh, question, you really don't want to just say what like you used and like this is a still life or this is a painting. Um, You really wanna tell the story behind the piece of art and why it's there and why you chose to include it. Um. I, I've seen a lot of portfolios on the day where it was just like two lines, like, yes, this is a still life with uh, pencil crayons. And that was it. And they, I don't think the judges would like to see that because they, they get that all the time. I'd like to think. Yeah. I don't think anyone really wants it like <laughs> explicitly like described to them. Um, on, on that note, I actually, uh, I remember when I applied to Arts Unionville, many, many years before Anna did. Um, and a tip that uh, my art teacher at that time gave me was um, when, when I was making each project, we actually started like a brief one, but then at the end of it, because usually you're, you've are you been like staring at this piece, you're probably stressed, you're in your own head so much. Uh, we pass it around to at least three or four different people to have them look at it, to be like, does this even make sense? Like, <laughs> uh, because if it's just yourself, sometimes it gets lost, like you're, you're tunnel visioned um, and you just need that outside perspective. And I mean, that's also a bonus to having your pieces done in advance. So you have the time 
uh, to also get the feedback you need for the descriptions as well, because they are quite important. Um, yeah. Okay, we're going to keep going here. So any tips for an architecture portfolio? Yes, certainly. So uh, if you are a student applying for architecture, I would want to see a lot of really, really good line drawings, perspective drawings, uh, proportion drawings, and uh, definitely lots of uh, line work. Like this is something that I'm not really good with personally. I'm much of much more of an organic uh, type of artist. Um, I like like loose flowy lines, but if you're an architecture student, you know, not to say that don't include those loose flow flowy lines. If that's what you want to do in your personal work, that's wonderful. But in the actual pieces that you submit, um, you will definitely need to show that you understand perspective and that uh, you can also, um, also one of the things that I would include are, you know, your own designs. So, you know, it's one thing to draw something that you see or to copy an existing building if you're learning how to draw something in perspective right like if you make up a building and you're drawing it, you, it chances are you're not going to draw it in three-point perspective um <laughs> i mean if you can you'll certainly get into art school but i would say that if you are um preparing a book on architecture to really focus on like go and look at architectural drawings and try to mimic them try to you know instead of copying the drawing directly try to uh, copy or um, take a style that you like and try to use it on your own original designs so that's what I would like to see definitely lots of perspective I still have students at OCAD and they're graduating. They cannot do perspective. Uh, they're graduating and they can't. But again, they're not architectural students. So definitely if you're going to architecture, interior design or um, industrial design, I think what I see a lot, lots of perspective, clean lines, but also a little knowledge of materials would be nice. Like something that we see like it's, it's very lack of knowledge of that. So maybe you want to start looking at some different types of flooring, tiling, or things that I use outside or inside. What is the difference? Maybe upholstery, maybe some fabric, some, something that has a little bit of a touch feel. That's usually very appreciated because um, not a lot of students have that. So if you have that, you're going to stand out a lot. Yeah, like tactile items for sure. And yeah. I know... Yeah. Like all all the friends I can think of that went through our architecture programs, um, it's always very like meticulous, attention to detail, clean. Um, yeah, like it, those are very very high on that priority list. Yeah, yeah. Lines drawn with rulers. Um, yes. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. I, um, it, it doesn't matter what program you're applying to. I want to see that you're passionate about that program. Yeah. So if you are applying to architecture school, like I want to see, you know, even even if you cut out different examples of architecture that inspire you or different shapes, and it doesn't even have to be existing architecture. It could be stuff that's in futuristic movies. Like I watch a lot of sci-fi, and the architecture in sci-fi is incredible, right? So it can be fantasy stuff too it doesn't necessarily have to be you know the the square buildings that you see every day so just show me that you're passionate about the subject and already I will be warmed up to look at your book and uh, give you better marks for it <laughs> okay we are running out of time but we're gonna I'm gonna try and rapid fire as many as we can before we wrap up um so just a heads up but we after this we do have a lot more in the chat that I want to see if we can touch on uh any tips for a well-rounded portfolio in illustration and visual arts great question seeing the event title 
Uh, any tips for a well-rounded portfolio? Okay, yes. Well-rounded to me means lots of variety and lots of different, like show again, like it comes down to showing me that you're trying different things, that you're trying different styles too. Um, and that you are really, really good with your technique. Like if you're somebody who, who likes to draw things loose and not super tight, um, show me some super tight drawings. If you're somebody who just, you know, draws things really tight and you're always color inside the lines, that's me, right? I, I would want to see more loose drawings. So you have to kind of push your own creative boundaries a little bit and, and show me that you're interested in learning new things. Um, yes, variety, definitely being open to variety, but specifically for illustration, I've noticed drawing hands and feet, it's something usually students lack and in illustration is, is usually required a lot. So definitely the figure, I would say figure, not just normal gestures, but all sorts of gestures, maybe in the ones that are not even happening. I mean, every day. So for sci-fi movies, as Faye was saying, some of the poses are not really every day. So, but hands and feet, I would say do, especially for illustration, practice hands and feet, hands and feet poses a lot, a lot. It's like, you gotta know the rules before you can break them is. <laughs> One of the things you often hear. Uh, anything to add, Anna, or else I'm gonna. Oh, uh, keeping it short and sweet, just experimentation and variation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, I'm just gonna double check to see if. Okay, so um, at this point, I'm going to just because I didn't. These were not pre like a uh, submitted before the Q and A started, so I didn't have time to type it in. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna read them, and we're gonna see if we can uh, get some of them answered because I know there's some really really good questions in the chat that I would like to get to. Uh, okay, so okay, any advice for what type of scale and size we should work in with our mediums, uh, paintings, illustrations, sculptures, etc. Great question. If I'm looking at your book and your, if I'm looking at your book in person, like let's say you have to drop things off, um, then scale is definitely important because if you have a really large piece, it has wow factor. Uh, I remember looking at a bunch of self portraits and I saw one self portrait that was like four feet high. And I was like, wow, like that is pure commitment. So definitely, yes. If it's digitally submitted, and it's just a picture, it's very hard to see the scale. So if you do have a huge painting and you're submitting digitally, take a photo of yourself like next to the painting just so you can show off that scale. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. It's definitely impressive. Yeah, I think um, what Faye says again, <laughs> Faye answers all the questions and I don't have anything to add usually, but um, I've seen lots of digital recently. It's been a while. And again, I know Faye has more experience with students for high school and I have more for university and most university are ask, asking for digital portfolios, but definitely sense of scale standing be, be next to it or have an object next to it so they can decide how big is it if it really matters okay if it's a vector drawing and it doesn't really matter it could always be bigger that doesn't matter like i don't want to say go big or go home but um you you want to set yourselves apart from everybody else and making your art bigger is a way to do that yeah yeah um okay the next question is, why would I need to get into a prestigious art school to succeed in an artistic career? That's a great question. Uh, nowadays, it's actually more and more easier to learn on your own. A prestigious high school, uh, sorry, a prestigious art school is definitely um, a, you know, there's, I, I have to say my art school experience, I can't imagine my life without it. Um, but if I, you know, went to, if I was applying for school today, everything is changing so quickly. So I'm not, it's definitely possible to teach yourself, but when you go to art school, you have a community of people to support you, to 
kick your butt, you know, to motivate you to get you to try new things. And so that experience alone is um, very, very valuable. Now, do you have to get into a really prestigious high, uh, prestigious school, art school? No, not necessarily. There are plenty of really good applied art schools um, that will, you know, help you get a job and help you apply the things that you learn. So it's really a personal choice. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a really good question. A lot of things that I also hear uh, is that um, it, it not necessarily, like Faye said, it's not necessarily about, oh, like which school as much as just having that community, those connections, because like we mentioned, long, I think at the beginning, one of the best things you can do yourself before you apply into your program is to actually talk to the people there. And then one of the things that will help you the most with your arts career after school is that community, is that network or those connections. Um, so a lot of art schools like that is kind of the prestige around it, um, but also a lot of disappointing like heartaches and, and sad stories that come out of art school experiences is because people kind of tunnel visioned on like, oh, this is it instead of staying open to maybe there are other programs or um, same school, but different disciplines and just being open to the adventure as uh, in phase word. <laughs> <laughs> I think what art school adds is a sense of belonging. Yes. Maybe a lot of us, and again, I grew up in a family that had never been artsy, nothing about arts. But when I went to art school, I was like, oh, this is my place. I, I'm seeing a lot of people that are like me. So I think what the big thing that added to me was the sense of belonging or finding people that are very similar minded to you. But these days, as yeah, at, at our time, it was not that easy with the internet and YouTube and everything was not. So we had no choice. I had no choice. And I cannot imagine myself doing what if I didn't go to art school. I have no idea. <laughs> but um, now, these days, it's much easier. There's much more opportunities, yes. Yeah, I find that it's a lot of it is about the community and just about the people that you surround yourself with and the amount of connections and opportunities that you'd be able to get from art school in no way, shape, or form do you need to go to an art school to be able to be successful in a career, but it, it, it just gives you more opportunities that would be harder to find on your own. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm going to take one last question. There are a, a quite a few that we didn't get to, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these questions into um, the Q&A portion for our next uh, session. So for those that didn't get your questions answered, uh, we will address them in the future at our next webinar. Uh, however, for the sake of time, I'm only going to do one more. And that is uh, specific to the Arts Univille program. Since Anna is here, we had someone ask uh, whether um, the, yes, it is to, wait one sec, comment apply to high school. My understanding is that you can only apply to the Arts High School in your boundary. Uh, for Arts Unionville Boundary, what are other good alternatives for schools in uh, that area, I guess, for visual arts? So, Anna, I don't know if you can speak to that in terms of the boundaries or, or if you want to speak to that. I don't think I'm in the Unionville Boundary. I don't think I am. But um, I, don't, I don't know if boundaries apply to um, applying to the specialty program. That's only if you want to go to the high school, like, normally i guess <laughs> but uh yeah um i don't think boundaries apply no Fair yeah, and, yeah anna's right i looked into it um i i would say uh, again like i would say don't just apply to the one like apply to several because some of them might be really competitive. Um, mm -hmm. Don't put all your eggs in one basket like me, but also don't spread yourself too thin and apply to like 10 different schools because you'll be really overwhelmed and stressed out. So I would say like three is pr a pretty good number. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know a lot of our students uh, that do apply to Arts Univille also apply here on Heights, uh, but you can usually do a Google search of local uh, visual arts high schools in your area. Okay. So I am going to thank you everybody for submitting the questions and for asking such insi insightful questions. Um, we are at time for our Q&A session, but I just wanted to leave you guys with a couple what's next. Uh, we do have an email list. So I put the, I'll put it in again, uh, the sign up link to our email list in the chat and uh, in the email list, we email resources, uh, updates, opportunities, and of course, when we have events like this. 
Additionally, we have blog posts on our website and YouTube videos uh, on our channel, which you guys are all on right now. So if you like what you're seeing and hearing, please do subscribe and like. It does help us out as we venture more and more into the online content creation world. You can register for the next portfolio webinar series as well. We have three, uh, this is the first of three and you do need to register separately for each one. And of course, we're gonna address the questions we didn't get to address today at the next one. Last but not least, we have a Discord community. So if you sign up uh, for our email list or just any of our social media platforms, you can DM us and ask us about that and we will give you more information. Uh, this is uh, like we talked about the three different portfolio night uh, themes in this series or industries. We do have different panelists for each one to speak to these industries. However, you do get to see me moderating through all of it. So you can't get rid of me. <laughs> Uh, if you are wondering about what we do and or you're not sure what program is right for you, we have this flowchart available on our website. Uh, our co-op students actually designed it, which is really, really exciting. Um, they designed it to help parents, to help the community understand better what programs we offer and how to find the right fit, depending on you know your age, your skill level and your artistic goals. Uh, this is our art mentorship program. It is, uh, like we talked about at the beginning, one of our known specialty offerings. You get a art artist mentor that walks alongside you to help you come up with uh, the, the curriculum, the lessons uh, to hit your goals and break it down step by step to show you how to get to where you need to go. Not to say that everything's guaranteed. You have to do the work and you have to be passionate about, uh, passionate about what you want to do, but we are here to walk alongside you to help you learn. And oh, this is a fun part. So for those that have stayed till now, if you do sign up for our portfolio email list, we are offering <laughs> a deal where uh, please, oh, one sec. If you just put in the comments uh, which portfolio you attended, you're gonna receive $25 off one of these programs. Real Estate Drawing, which Nissan teaches, so you can see more of her, talk to her, learn more um, about her background and learn, learn some really, really wonderful realistic drawing skills. Or you can also uh, get $25 off one of Faye's uh, art intensive courses. And she has a figure drawing one and a portrait drawing one, which you can find out more about on our website. I don't know if that was too fast, so I'm gonna flip it back just so you can see here. All right, um, and, whew, okay. I think I'm doing okay on the time. Uh, for those who want, want to learn more, this is the playlist to go on when you click on our channel for our portfolio tips. We have a ton of stuff. Uh, and it, again, you can leave your comments, likes, questions, suggestions. We love suggestions and recommendations for future content. The blog that we talked about on the website, also a lot of really, really great content. I would highly recommend you check it out. And that's it. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. It was our pleasure to chat with you tonight, and we hope that you found it valuable. Uh, I will. We're gonna sign off for tonight, but if uh, you guys just want to wave bye, <laughs> bye guys, bye, bye, bye. -bye. <laughs>